Time now for an in-depth look at the market news this afternoon. And for that, I'm joined on the line by Dr. Kim Sewan, Professor of Economics at Ehua Women's University. Professor Kim, good afternoon. Thanks for coming on the program today. Good afternoon, Devin. Well, U.S. stocks uh, retreated a bit overnight, Professor, with the biggest declines on the Dow this time at about a one and a quarter percent. Uh, so the rally of the last week may be losing steam. Also, though, the tensions with China over Nancy Pelosi's trip to Taiwan, uh, still a lot of concern about what the Fed's going to do as well. What's the story in the global markets? Uh, U.S. stocks fell on Tuesday as U.S. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi's visit to Taiwan added to uh, geopolitical tensions and Federal Reserve officials indicated that their fight against inflation was still uh, going strong. Uh, the Dow Jones Industrial Average dropped 1.2 percent, and the S&P 500 also declined 0.7 percent. The technology-heavy Nasdaq Composite slipped 0.2 uh, percent. Uh, uh, Mrs. Pelosi uh, landed in Taiwan on Tuesday and met with Taiwanese officials uh, in the first visit by a uh, House Speaker to the uh, democratically governed island since 1997. Uh, Asian, because of her visit to Taiwan, Asian uh, stocks uh, sold off. Uh, in China, the benchmark Shanghai Composite dropped 2.3 percent, uh, while Hong Kong Hang Seng Index fell 2.4 percent on Tuesday. Uh, while Mrs. Pelosi's arrival in Taiwan did, did not immediately provoke any strong responses from Beijing, it fueled uh, worries that the already strained uh, U.S.-China relationship could uh, be worsened. Indeed. Uh, well, Korean stocks, on the other hand, were higher today, uh, even though we're in the region here. Uh, we've seen continued net buying by foreign investors, strength today in insurance, uh, entertainment shares, food, uh, the COSDAQ up by even more. But the exchange rate, uh, the currency is still uh, quite depreciated from where it was before. Tell us about the domestic market. Even with uh, U.S. markets dropped yesterday, uh, domestic markets rebounded from yesterday's uh, retreat. The benchmark cost be advanced 0.9 percent, while cost up also gained 1.4 percent today. Uh, the rise of domestic markets represents the geopolitical risk of U.S. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi's visit to Taiwan is relatively independent from uh, Korean economy and uh, domestic uh, stock market. In cost be market, uh, foreign investors uh, uh, led the market rise. Uh, as you said, uh, Devin, this is something unusual considering foreign investors con uh, continue sales in domestic market from the beginning of the year. Uh, their net purchase was uh, $474 billion uh, one today. Most of the large cap stocks rose today as the whole market expands. But the Samsung Electronics dropped 0.7 percent and the POSCO also lost 0.2 percent. Uh, the second largest uh, cap LG Energy Solution gained 4.8 percent, and SK Hynix also advanced 0.1 percent today. Well, in the domestic economy, Professor, consumer data show inflation in Korea at 6.3 percent. Prices in restaurants were up by the most since 1992. Food and fuel, of course, have been the big drivers of inflation. What do you see in this data, Professor, and when is inflation going to ease off? There is no sign of uh, declining inflation yet, according to July's consumer price level. Uh, consumer prices soared 6.3 percent last month from a year earlier, uh, accelerating from a 6 percent on year spike in June. That marked the sharpest on year increase since November 1998, when consumer inflation jumped 6.8 percent on year. The inflation rate stayed in the 6 percent range for the second straight month. And the consumer prices rose at the fastest pace uh, was due to mainly due to high energy and uh, service and food prices. The continuing high inflation uh, raises ex expectation that Bank of Korea will again uh, raise the policy rate to tame inflation, uh, particularly in the next monetary policy meeting of August. It became more likely to raise the key interest rate. Uh, by a half percent rather than a quarter percent. 
Right. Well, uh, looking at the data in China and the U.S., we see some weakness, though the situation is, of course, very uh, different in those countries anyway. That could mean lower demand for oil, some say, which has come down significantly in price from its recent peak. Uh, but with OPEC Plus due to meet soon, what do you see happening with oil prices? OPEC and its allies, allies which is called uh, OPEC Plus, uh, are considering either a modest increase in oil production or maintaining output at current levels when they meet Wednesday. Uh, the OPEC Plus seeks uh, more time to assess a possibility of slowdown in global economic demand. This lukewarm uh, response to the pressure to boost the supply after President Biden's high-profile trip to Saudi Arabia last month raised oil price 1.5 percent today. Uh, the OPEC Plus actually agreed last year to roll out small uh, monthly increases as part of a plan to raise output to pre-pandemic levels. That deal ends in August, uh, although many members are producing below their allotted uh, quotas. Uh, meanwhile, oil prices, which soared uh, as COVID-19 lockdowns eased and economic activity picked back up, have uh, slipped in recent weeks on worries about global growth. Uh, the drop uh, has erased most of the gains seen, uh, gains seen after Russia's invasion of Ukraine in late uh, February. Right, we'll have to keep an eye on the uh, OPEC Plus meeting, Professor, uh, but we'll have to leave it there for today. Uh, thank you as always for coming on the program. We appreciate your insights. Thank you very much.